Okay, so we see here a shift to the left, high over three, uh, no period change, amplitude of two, and we shift down of three. So if you follow my recommendation, we'll shift to the left, we'll shift down, we'll find that uh, kind of beginning position and work out from there. So, So we're going to shift to the left, pi over 3. So here is pi over 3, negative pi over 3. We're going to shift to down 3 from there. Okay, so this is kind of like our new starting place. We would normally treat this area here. So uh, this sine wave is going to be a uh, not flipped over, it's gonna be right side up. Uh, it's gonna have an amplitude of two, so it's gonna come up to two, it's gonna go down as far as, far as what? To negative five, up as far as negative one. It's gonna go up to negative one, it's gonna come down, down to negative five, and come back up. Just to kinda mark it out. This is negative pi over three, it is going to end its first cycle over here. Okay, so let's move this over again a little bit. How, how many radians should I go through before I end, before I get to the end of that first cycle? Two pi, two pi that's the period. Right? So we should go through two pi, we should add two pi uh, if we give it a common denominator, it'll be 6 pi over 3. Okay. Negative pi over 3 plus 6 pi over 3 is 5 pi over 3. This is a little tricky. We normally are at the pi over 2 uh, delineations, but it is, it is what it is. So here we are at uh, 1 pi over 3, 2, 3, 4, 5 pi over 3. Okay. That covers a full 2 pi period. Uh, Halfway between here and there, which would put us right there, is at 2 pi over 3. Okay, so we're going to start off going like this. We're going to come back to the midline here. Okay, and halfway between these two, we're going to be at our maximum. Halfway between these two is between these two marks, though. Okay, Halfway between negative pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. You can kind of work out if that's pi over 6, or if that's not completely obvious. You could just find the number that is between negative pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Okay, it's like the average value between the two of these. So 2 pi over 3 minus pi over 3. We're just adding these two values together and then we'll divide by 2. Divide by 2. So 2 pi over 3 minus pi over 3 is 1 pi over 3 times 1 half is pi over 6. So that's where it's going to meet its maximum. Okay, over here we have pi over 6. Uh, this is uh, 4 pi over 6, 5, 6, 7 pi over 6. Okay, that's where it will be down here, all the way at the minimum of negative 5. And it will end that period way over here at 5 pi over 3. As you can see, amplitude of 2 goes up to this maximum, down to this minimum, back here to the midline. thing that happens is what? You're wrong. <laughs> I was just wrong for eight minutes. Okay, and now, well, it's better that you've been wrong than me, you know. Now that I was wrong, we're going to do this all over practice, again. Though, we know that. Okay, yeah, sure. Let's look at it on the right side. Okay, so it's all the same except for it moves over 
pi over 4 instead of pi over 3. So we'll make this negative pi over 4. Well, negative pi over 4, you have period of 2 pi. You're going to give it a denominator of 4, so I'll make this 8. So this is 7 pi over 4. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 pi over 4. Halfway through, that'll be, let's see, 3 pi over 4. Okay, halfway between those two, that'll be right here at pi over 4. Uh, 3, 4, 5 pi over 4. We'll shift it down 3. going to start over here at negative 5 over 4. It's going to be in the middle there. It's going to be like this. It's going to go up to 1 still, down to negative 5. Okay. There, down to here. And there we go. So the only thing that changes is the pi over 4 and pi over 3. So we better check and make sure this number 2 matches as well. I'm glad it got mentioned at some point, but not at a more uh, convenient time. Over your time. <laughs> not ever. Power two. Oh, so you know, that would have this again. <laughs> All right. Well, we're we're rolling along here. Uh, we got some extra practice in there. That's good. What is this going to change? And this is going to change the period. The period, as Bo told us earlier, is 2 pi over 4, 2 pi over b. So pi over 2 is our period. Pi over 2 is the shift to the left. No, no, uh, no vertical shift, right? If we go to the left, negative pi over 2. The period itself is pi over 2. This is a little easier than the last one. Where is this first period going to end? No. It's at negative, starts at negative pi over 2, it is pi over 2 wide, that's how wide the first period is, so it's going to end at 0. And so it's going to, that's going to be the halfway mark, uh, it's got an amplitude of 1, there we go, go oh, inside. Go amplitude of 1, so it goes up to 1 and down to negative 1, this is negative pi over 4. Normal sine wave starts going up and then down and then. Wait, do you not have to mark the other ones? Uh, I I should have what I should have done. Is oh, thought about how how big. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know how 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 big the period is really. I should think about that, and so I should kind of make this a little bigger. Make negative pi over two way up here. So this is negative pi over four. So that would be negative what? Well, this would be what? Negative what? Over six. No. Eight. Eight. Half of that would be negative pi over eight. This would be negative three pi over eight. And then mark it off that way. We can make it a little taller too so you can see everything. Here we go. Mark it off the key points of a sine wave. There we go. Down, down here, and through there. Do another one, wind up at there, positive pi over 2. Do another one, wind up at positive pi. Do another one, wind up at 3 pi over 2. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, this would be new material. 14.5. We're going to write some functions. Are we having a class time for 14.5? What's that? Are we having a class time for 14.5? After lunch. Oh, sorry. We're going to have a review day next time. Yes. Okay. And then we'll have a quest after that. Yes. Is that, that quest going to be the last yeah. quest of the year? No, we'll find out. I'm still whipping them out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's what we have. This could be any pendulum kind of a situation, but let's pretend it's a little girl on a swing. That's, that's what I had a picture of the other day. Fine. Um, I'm just talking about my kids. So take. 
Uh, put them in children, put them in a swing, pull them back here. We're going to start at the back part of the swing, okay? And let's say that that's four feet high. Let's say that uh, at the bottom of the swing, they're two feet off the ground, well, because that's just convenient, even though that's a really high swing to be off the ground, okay? Pretty high. And then uh, when they swing out here, naturally, that, so for convenience sake, they'll be at four feet, and then they'll swing back here, they'll be at four feet again, four feet high again, okay? So we're gonna write a function. Uh, let's write height. As a function of time. That means that I can find height if I know time. If I know time, I can plug it in and it'll tell me the height. This is the question that I asked you two classes ago uh, that kind of spurred this whole thing on to talk about sinusoidal waves. Right? Might want to take notes. See if you can memorize everything. You're good at that. But if you, Well, we can see that since this is a down, up kind of motion like this, that it should be a, a sinusoidal wave, okay? If you were to graph this, which is helpful in, in writing these functions, I think. Well, here's time zero, right? This is the time axis. This is where time is zero. Okay. Uh, and on this axis here, this would be the height. So where should my point be here on the h-axis, or the y-axis, how do you think of it? At four. It okay, starts off at four feet high. And what's the next point I know something about? Could you say it for this? One second. One second. One second. She's at two feet. Two feet right here. In the Could you extrapolate some information based on this? Yeah. What could you say? Can you predict the future about anything? In another second, she'll be four feet high. In another second, which at, at two seconds, she'll be back up to four feet. What does this start to look like? This uh, the inverse of sine, or the negative mm -hmm. sine wave. Looks like the negative sine wave? No, no, no. Looks like the cosine wave. Cosine starts at the maximum, down to the minimum, back up to the maximum. Cosine. Okay, we have this midline. Where's that midline? Three, three feet. So at zero seconds, four feet high. One second, two two feet high. Two seconds, four feet high again, and over and over and over. This is going to happen. And as I try to write this function, well. Good first choice would be, are we going to use the sine or the cosine wave? Okay, let's start with that. Okay, let's look at this cosine wave. What's the amplitude of this cosine wave? One. One. The amplitude, the measurement from the middle up to the top is one. So, one is good. Okay. Should we put a negative there? No. So negative starts at the maximum as it ought to. Mm -hmm. Good. If we start at the bottom, at the lowest height, and she just took off. There's no pumping her at all. I just kind of kicked her into the, her height of four feet. Come on. Then cosine, negative you know, cosine, maybe it's going to be a violent descent. You got to learn. You got to learn. You got to learn how to fall in. So, so far, so good. Amplitude of one, not flipped over. Cosine of, okay. Um, we should think about. Well, there's no, I mean, there are wrong answers. That you may say something that could be wrong, but uh, there are many right answers here. When I ask, what else can you tell me about this function? Mean x. You what? Mean x. OK, yeah. So mean x. What does he say? You do need like an x. x. Oh, you need an x. It does not sound like that. Alright, we're Jesus. wasting time. We're just grasping onto this thing a little too long. Okay, tell me about this function, though. Other than yes, of course, it needs an x. You add three x. 
Okay, so it shifted up three. Okay, that's a good thing to, to know. It's it shifted up three. The midline's at three. It shifted up three. Right. What can you tell me about any sh horizontal shifts? Or no horizontal shifts? No, it starts right on the y axis, like we want the cosine to do. Cosine, uh, what about the period? Period of two. The period of two. Not two pi. Not two pi. Two. Well, maybe it's immediately just maybe it's just second nature to you and you're doing really well, but if not, just hold on. We're trying to figure out, like we know everything so far. The only thing we don't know is this. We know that this is a positive one. We know that there's going to be a period change. We know there's no horizontal shift, so there's no need to worry about that. And we know that it's just F3. We're just going to figure out what B is. But remember that 2 pi over B gives us the period. It's just that now we don't know what B is. We know what the period is. So 2 pi over b equals 2. You can see that if you're going to come out with this fraction to be 2, then if the b would have to be pi, obviously. You could multiply by pi on both sides and get 2 pi equals 2b. Becoming more and more clear that b has to be pi. Divide by 2 to cancel out, and now absolutely we see b is pi. So this is pi. So pretty neat. I mean, we can, you know, people don't follow mathematical models perfectly. Nothing does. Except for the things that we designed to work that way, like money in a bank. But even then, it's not perfect. Because if the formula says you should have 500.23597264322 dollars, you don't get that. You get only up to the hundreds place in pennies. Okay. Where does that money go? Where did that rest of the Where's that Probably go? lost. Where's that fraction of a penny go? It's so small. Oh it's millions it of pounds, so oh like you yeah. get like one or two extra pennies out of a million pounds. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, even though those the real life situations never perfectly fit a mathematical model, it's just like you'll never draw a perfect 30 degree angle or a perfect circle, still, it does make a pretty darn good prediction, okay? And if I use this and I plug in, well, if I plug in five seconds, then it's pretty obvious where she should be, right? Where should she be at five seconds? The bottom. At the bottom? Yeah. An odd number of seconds later, she should be at the bottom? Yeah. yeah. OK. Uh, but if I want to know exactly what height she was at, or really close to what height she's, what she is at, uh, you know, 7.39562 seconds, or or if heaven forbid, we uh, we actually have a real world model where it doesn't work out perfectly that she swings from the back to the front in exactly two seconds, right? We have to write a different model. But uh, if that were the case, if it actually took like 1.497 seconds, then we have to write a model that's a lot like this one. We have a period of 1.497 instead of two. Is that the middle-ish? Is that the middle-ish? Almost yes. to the middle. Can we use our chip thingy? Is there really going to go to the back? Oh, that's right. Oh, wow. Come on. Anybody got an agenda? Somewhere. Oh, it's not going to be up. Why do we have to use your chip thing? I thought we had a chip thing. Yeah, right. We don't today. Oh. You can go to the back. You can go to the back. All right, here is a. A more simplistic, less real world situation. Okay, Let's see if we can just take this raw data, all right, and turn it into a sinusoidal wave function. Okay, so figure out its amplitude, figure out its period, figure out if there's a shift, figure out which function you should use. Yeah, we're just taking the graph. Instead of graphing it, we are writing the function that would make that graph. Remember though, it's it can be a, a simple process where we've studied these patterns over and over and over. Okay. Well, first of all, let's just choose. Should it be sine or cosine? Sine. Sine. So you know it's a. We don't know what a. Maybe a. a maybe h is one. We'll find out. Sine of b times x minus h plus k. This would be your vertical shift. If there isn't a vertical shift, you don't have to worry about k. This is a horizontal shift. There isn't one, you don't have to worry about it. This is a period change. If there isn't a period change, you don't have to worry about it. 
And this is your amplitude and flipped over if necessary. Uh, and if it's not flipped over, don't worry about it. If it has the same amplitude, don't change a thing. <laughs> Examine all four of those things. See if any of those things has happened. And write the model accordingly. Write the function that will make that graph. Okay, I heard someone say that the period is pi. <laughs> no. Not period. Is period pi? No, yes. Probably not. Yes, it is. Yeah. 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 It starts yes. here, uh, actually, goes up and down and back up. And <laughs> if we went from here, down and back up and come back down, pi over, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 well, is pi. pi. So the period is pi. So that should be able to tell us b, right? Because 2 pi over b needs to be pi. Obviously, b is 2. So B is 2. 2, that's what we put there. What about the amplitude? 1. Is it negative 1? No. No, it is, it is normal sine wave action. So this is just 1. What about the shift? Is there any shifting left or right? No, sir. So this is what? This H is what? 0. Is it a shift up or down? No. So this is what? 0. Zero. We have it. Y equals the sine of 2x. You see the period change there, you know what the period is. Okay. You just work with it. Okay. Try it yourself for this one. Figure out all that stuff. Make the numbers fit the situation. Alright, let's talk about First sine or cosine? Which do you think? Sine. Sine. It starts out nicely here. Mm -hmm. Could we, this is a question, could we use a cosine wave instead? Mm -hmm. I'm sure a sine and a cosine wave are identical in their shape. What's that? You would start there at pi, because you can tell, since this is 2 pi, halfway between would be this top part. So you'd have to shift it to the right, pi, if you minus pi. But if it's our choice, and we don't have to use a cosine wave, we'll use a sine wave, that's what I would do, because it's perfect for sine. So we use a sine wave. Let's talk about the amplitude of that sine wave. Let's talk about that first letter, A. First number, A. What should the amplitude be? Two. Two? Positive two? Yep. Yes. Not negative two. Yes. Not flipped over. OK, two. Okay. Do we have a period change? Is the period different from normal? Yeah. Normally, it's what? But now it is. Okay. So 2 pi <laughs> over b needs to be 4 pi. Okay. 2 pi over b needs to be 4 pi. We multiply by pi on both sides. We get 2 pi equals b times 4 pi. We'll divide by 4 pi. And b is. One half x is a shift up or down? No. Seems like this would do it, right? Let's try it. Let's just try. Okay. Let's plug in some key points as we uh, think they ought to work. Uh, we plug in a pi. We should wind up at two, right? Okay. Let's do that. Two times the sine of one half times pi. So that would be the sine of pi over two. What's the sine of pi over two? Think about your unit circle. Pi over two, right there. What's the sign? Root 3 over 2. If it's too hard, you really should study your unit circle. Root 3 over 2. Right there. Root 3 over 2. Nope. Here's pi over 2. Oh. It looks like, okay, uh, 0, 1. 1. The sign is the vertical. So it's 1. So, it's one. so <laughs> this is 1 times 2. 2. Exactly right. At 2 pi, we should come out with a 0. 2 times sine of 1 half times 2 pi. 2 pi times 1 half is 1 pi. So 2 times the sine of sine of pi. What's the sine of pi? Here's pi right here. Pi. <laughs> What's the sine of pi? 0. 0. 2 times 0 is 0. It looks to be working out famously.
confirming what we pretty confidently have found the right answer. All right, give this one a try. All right, what do you say, sine or cosine? Cosine is easier. Either, either is always the right answer. Uh, which is easier, cosine definitely. Okay? Now we have to modify this, you know, the parts of, of the graph, the amplitude, the period, maybe, you know, whatever it is. What, what should be, what's different about this graph compared to a regular cosine graph? Amplitude is two. Amplitude is two, so we should definitely see a two here because it stretches from the midline at negative two up to zero, so that is definitely an amplitude of two. Right. What else is different about this cosine wave than a regular cosine wave? Mm -hmm. so it's down. So it's down two, so we're gonna subtract two, it's gonna be down two, okay? We could, I, I see this in a different way, but that's correct. You could look at it as being having been moved to the left pi. You could see it as having been moved right pi. Or is there no another way to interpret it? Going to the left two pi, that would mean it would be right there, which. If you're doing sine. Oh, if you're doing sine, yes. If you're doing sine, uh, well, it would be moved to the left. 3 pi over 2, or more. I mean, we can we can shift it any number of ways. Left, right. What's that? Yeah, it's like two so that that's what I was thinking. Is uh, this is a cosine wave, uh, and I saw it not as shifted, but it's flipped over. Could you just look at this as a cosine wave that's upside down? Mm -hmm. That instead of starting. Yeah. Up here, going down here, and going back up here, it starts down here, goes up there, and goes down there. So set, several different options. We could do f of x equals negative two cosine of. Okay, we need to talk about. If, if we do it that way, there's no horizontal shifting. Uh, is there a period change? No. Okay, a period of what? Of two, two pi. Down two pi. So no period change. Just negative two cosine x minus two. Work that one. Or you could do a different function. G of x equals 2 cosine x plus pi still minus 2. That's the same thing. That must mean that negative 2 cosine x is the same as, well, it really means cosine x and cosine, well, okay, hold on. Negative cosine x and cosine of x plus pi same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Negative 2 cosine um, x plus 2 pi minus 2. Uh, let's see. Negative, wait, <laughs> what are you saying? 2 cosine x? Ne yeah, negative 2. Oh, negative 2. Oh, sure. Negative 2. So negative 2 cosine x would make it be flipped over, and we could see it as being shifted to the left 2 pi. Okay. That works too. With these. These waves, since they're just a repeated pattern over and over and over, there's no one right answer that is the only right I could give you parameters and say, uh, write it in this way. Right? Write it in this way. Y equals uh, A cosine X plus K. Now I've left you no room to have a shift. So then you would have to force it to be a negative 2 for A and then a negative 2 for K. So that's how we could uh, make it so there's only right, one right answer. But if I just leave it open, it's open for lots of different interpretations. Okay? Let's try that. Yeah, we can look at this as a, as a cosine or a sine, so we shift it left or right. But if we can make it so that it just fits the sine of the cosine quite directly without a shift, if that's possible, that would be pretty nice. Without a shift plus or minus? I'm not saying that you have to. Just 
possible, that's what I that's what I gravitate towards. Right, let's make a choice between sine and cosine. Yeah. You chose cosine? Yeah. Everybody chose cosine? Mm -hmm. What about sine? Sine and cosine is there. It's hard. It's much easier. Oh. Um, sine starts at the middle and goes up. That's the way the sign works, isn't it? Oh. Sign goes up. The sign starts in the middle, goes up. Oh, dear. <laughs> what kind of does not go down? Yeah, but you can see where it kind of goes like this. It doesn't, I haven't drawn that, but it doesn't mean wow. Uh, okay, so f of x equals, I guess we'll write it both ways. Let's start with the cosine, because everybody seems to think that was pretty good. So cosine. Negative two cosine. Three cosine. So it has an amplitude of three. Negative three. Three. No, just three. No oh. negative. Well, it could be either one, couldn't it? Yeah. It could be a regular cosine that's been shifted to the right a little bit. It could be a negative cosine that's been shifted to the left a little bit. <coughs> If it's negative three, then it's uh, we can see it as being shifted to the left a little bit. Okay. Uh, what's the period of this thing here? Five. How do you figure out this pi? This is where I It's gotta come back up the pi to be a full period. Oh, so if we trace out a full period from here, all the way up and down and back up again, we'll be back at the midline, completing that period at pi. That one, one cycle right there traces out in pi, from zero to pi. So the period is pi. Period is pi, two pi over mm -hmm. b equals pi. And we can see that b is two. Okay, so we got a negative three cosine. That means that it starts off at its minimum. So we can look at this as the beginning point. We could also view this as the beginning point. Shift it to the right three pi over four. Or shift it to the left pi over four. So that would make it what it's at parentheses. Mm -hmm. X plus pi over four. Okay, does it shift up or down? Yeah. Um, okay. What if I made you use? What if I made you make it look like this? A sine of b x plus k. Three sine. Still be two, because the period is still the same, so B is still the same. Just X, because it starts right there. This is a sine wave that's not been shifted left or right at all. Unless I force it, it should be shifted left all the way over here. You could do that if you want to or not. And then minus three. That works too. Infinite numbers of possibilities. Real silly and take this and shift it to the right 50 pi. And it would still be correct. It would still do the exact same thing. Sine or cosine? Cosine. Two. Two. It's got an amplitude of two. It goes from here. You can see this is the middle. Up to three. So it's got an amplitude of two. Okay. Inside the parentheses would be x plus 4. Mm -hmm. 
Why a plus four? Oh, Kyle's four. Kyle's oh. seven. So if you were graphing this and you saw a plus pi over four, you know that shifts to the left pi over four. That certainly seems to work. Cosine starts at the maximum here and goes down from there. This is working. Now we just need to figure out what b is. Which means we need to figure out what the period is. Which means we just need to look for a section of the wave that is repeated and figure out how much space does that one wave take up on the x-axis. Two pi, isn't it? Two pi. Why don't we just start here? Go up, up, back down. Is that one full cycle? Yeah. That's one full oh. cycle. How long did it take? I don't know. It took pi over two. From here to there, oh. pi over two. From here, wow. from here, all the way over to there, still pi over two. From negative pi over four to pi over four, it's still pi over two. So you just need to look where does a full cycle happen? So it's pi over two. The period is pi over two. Two pi over b equals pi over 2. Multiply by b on both sides, so 2 pi equals b times pi over 2. Let's multiply by the reciprocal, 2 over pi. So we'll multiply by 2 over pi. Pi is canceled, 2 times 2 is 4. b is 4. Can we do it without a shift? Yes. How would it look without a shift? Negative two cosine. Negative two cosine. Four. Still four. X. X plus one. Still plus one. That's probably what I would come up with. Because I just tend to think, if I can keep it on the y-axis just by flipping it over, that's what I'll do. But it seems like maybe some of you brain and you are left and right shifting brain, I guess. I'm a flipping over brain and you're a shifting left and right brain. They both make the same graph, so it doesn't really matter which one. Unless I ask you to do it without a horizontal shift, then you'd be wrong. If you put a horizontal shift on there. Now we have just two points on the graph, but they're, they're really key points. Why, why do I say they're such key points? There's a minimum and a maximum. I'm not giving you random points somewhere in the middle. If I gave you one that was exactly in the middle, that would also be very useful. But I'm giving you a maximum and a minimum. So we know that there's an amplitude, there's a midline, there's a, a period, there's a shift maybe, there's maybe a vertical shift as well. What is anything that you can tell me about any of those things? Just by looking at, at that piece, those pieces of information. Amplitude of two. Amplitude of two, how do you figure out it's an amplitude of two? Clearly at five. Minus, minus one up. equals four divided by two. Good. Five minus one is going to tell you how tall it is from bottom to top. Right? And the amplitude you know is half of that. Divided by two, amplitude of two. Okay. That would mean that the median is three. What's that now? The median is three. Uh, the middle of it is at a three. So if, it, if I know the amplitude is two and I work my way back down two from there, that's a three. So we know we're going to have, like in all of the stuff that we do, we know a couple of things so far. We're going to have a 2 here for the F2. We're going to have a plus 3 here at the end for a shifting F3. What else can you tell me? Or can you make a choice about whether you think sine or cosine is the right one? You say negative sine. You say negative sine. So we'll put a negative 2 on the sine. Does it work out right? Does it go, I mean, is the middle of this right there on the y-axis? Okay, just say yes or no, and when you say yes or no, we're backing up with some kind of a reason for that. Yes. Yes, yes why? The x points are the same, they're just negative, so the middle of it. Absolute bound. Absolute bound. The, the x value of the maximum is it's on the left, right? It's, it's on the left of the y-axis, and the, uh, the x value of the minimum is on the right, and they're both the same distance from the y-axis, so it must be that the middle goes right through the y-axis. So it's a safe move. 
conclusion. Uh, so just negative two sine, no horizontal shifting, right? Just flip that thing right over. How about the period? How do you know it's changed? But it doesn't matter where it ends. It matters how wide it is. It could end at 17 pi over 34, but as long as the left side is 2 pi to the left of that, the period pi, is still 2 pi. 2 pi over 3. So from here, so this is negative pi over 3, and this is pi over 3. So from here to there is 2 pi over 3. So is the period 2 pi over 3? No. No? If no, then why? That's not a full cycle. So we'd have to go to there by that full cycle. Where would that be? Another pi over 3. Another pi over 3? 2 pi over 3. Yeah, half of it is 2 pi over 3. From here to there is 2 pi over 3. From here to there is Four 2 pi over 3 wide. Okay. So this should be another, oh, I'm going too far. From here to there should also be 2 pi over 3. So how much is that in, in all? Does that make a whole period? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That goes from the top of the wave down to the bottom, back up to the top, in a, a period of 4 pi over 3. So the period. So 2 pi over b equals the period 4 pi over 3. And solve for b. Right, so multiply by b on both sides. 2 pi equals 4 pi over 3 times b. Multiply by the reciprocal, we get 3 over 4 pi times 2 pi. On this side, I'm going to cancel that. We're just left with b. Pi's cancel, 2's cancel, 3 halves. B is 3 halves. 3 halves x. And we already talked about this earlier. There's no horizontal shift. Did I do it?